Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing our contrarian betting breakdown for this UFC uh, card. We have 12 fights to get through, and again, let's just kind of go over the rules here. Um, we're, we're not trying to figure out what's the most likely, likely thing to happen. All we're trying to figure out is what the public is on, what is the, what is the easy narrative story to tell, and then presume that that is what we're supposed to fade, and we should play something else. Okay. It is the way that I've dealt with all kinds of sports wagering over the years, stock market analysis, things like that. Um, to be able to beat a 30, 40 cent big completely based on your knowledge of the sport is extremely difficult in a liquid market. But if you can get a sense for at least where the psychology is, um, you can at least figure out what the most likely things are to be over bet. Um, and Contrarian, contrary to most wagering systems where you're supposed to try to get your wagers in early to kind of beat the line movement, with this kind of style, the later you wait, the better, because you just get a better sense for what the public's going to do. You know, the, the later, you know, the later in the cycle you you analyze it. You know, the, the the Twitter space and all the betting markets and the tout systems, they all kind of participate in groupthink and everybody starts to tell these stories throughout the week. By the end of the week, the entire industry is pretty sure about what's going to happen. So once the industry is completely sure about what's going to happen, that's when we fade it. Okay. So uh, we're going to go through this and we're going to go over the rules once again. Um, there are 12 fights and we are going to bet one thing on every single fight on the card. And that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Secondly, we're going to bet one unit on every fight on the card. And for us, one unit is $180, 10 times high. Uh, on this Yom Kippur, which we probably shouldn't be gambling anyway, uh, maybe we can at least uh, uh, you know, be supportive of the cause by at least going 10 times lucky 18. Um, lastly is we are going to presume that the first 11 fights on the card, we are going to lose them all. So that the 12th fight in the main event, we have to get all our money back. So we're going to be betting something that is 11 or 12 to 1 or higher. And the idea of this, again, is just to kind of train you to be to be suspicious and to be cynical and to think about wagering in a little bit of a different way than just following the sheep and following the herd. Um, so let's just kind of get into it. First fight on the night, we have Clayton Carpenter versus, um, well, the first fight that we have listed is Clayton Carpenter versus Lucas Rocha, Rocha. And, you know, Clayton Carpenter just has such a big edge with the grappling here that it seems kind of silly to go against him. Um, but we have heard that Lucas Rocha does have some KO power. So what does all this mean? What this means is that you can't really bet Carpenter by decision or even Carpenter by sub with his with his grappling, because that's kind of telling the easy story. And you also can't bet Lucas Roca by knockout, okay? The only thing you really do is play uh, maybe Carpenter by knockout or maybe Roca by decision. Um, so let's kind of take a look and see what these contrarian things are looking like. Carpenter by knockout at plus 500, that, that is sort of interesting, but... To play Roca by decision plus 650, that, I mean, that's very contrarian. I don't think anybody's doing it. I don't know if it says a shot, but I do know that you're getting value here. Um, just because it's the it's the least it's it's the story that's most difficult to tell. But I mean, hell, I can tell it. Uh, Carpenter can't get his takedowns. He's off his he's off his layoff, and judges hate wrestlers. So um, I'll take a shot. Roca by decision. Or 180. Okay, Corey McKenna versus Julia Palastri. I don't exactly get this one. Um, we're just, I guess, going to be the sucker here because when I looked at this fight, the first thing I thought of was that McKenna should just be like minus two to one because she has such a grappling edge. She's just going to get get her takedowns and just kind of win that way. But all week I've heard that Julia Palastri is just bigger. Corey McKenna has bad fight IQ. Corey McKenna is not going to be able to get this fight to the ground. And Palacios is just going to win this kind of boring decision. So we're just going to just, just play McKenna. And I'll tell you, if we were, if I really had it in me, I'd play like McKenna inside the distance. Maybe she can get some kind of submission here. Um, I mean, McKenna by submission has got to be pretty big. It's like 18 to 1? Or by KO is 20... I'm just going to bet McKenna inside the distance here. 
This seems kind of crazy. Um, McKenna inside looks like, let's see. Winning method. McKenna inside plus 12 to 1. Okay. We will try it. Nobody, nobody believes, so we will be the only one to believe. All right. Uh Daniel Argetta versus Cody Haddon. Um Argetta definitely has the wrestling advantage here, and everybody kind of knows that. Um, and Haddon is probably better everywhere else, certainly on the striking. So uh unfortunately you're not you're getting a little bit of love on both sides of this but as far as like the method of victory here again i don't think that people are are playing argetta inside the distance and i think that's a mistake we're gonna we're gonna take a shot with that um as a matter of fact like argetta in by sub is plus 650 i mean he was just one bad referee's decision away from making that happen in like just two fights ago we're, we're going to take a shot at this. Argetta by sub for 180 plus the 650. Uh, Junior Taffa versus Sean Sharaf. Um, I mean, nobody knows who this Sean Sharaf guy is. And he replaced, what's his name? Um, Chris Barnett. And he's like only plus 245. I mean, for me, I mean, that means he's got to have something here. So we're we're, we're going to take a shot. Sheriff, the one that nobody knows anything about, that no one is really going to play. We'll play him plus only 245 for 180. Themba Garimbo versus Nico Price. Okay, I I this one is is way too easy for me. I, I if you if you watch 7,500 forms of content this week. You're going to see 7,500 recommendations of Themba Garimbo here. And you're going to hear from people who hey, who have bet against Garimbo before. They've all capitulated. They're all saying, okay, you know, in this spot, we're just going to take Garimbo. Um, and, I, and remember, when I say that you're going to get like 75 out of 75 people taking Garimbo, it's not even straight up. It's 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 with the money line. No one's even taken a shot at Nico Price plus the plus the money line. So it's got to be a terrible bet. So we'll try it. Nico Price plus the 260 for 180. Uh, Jonathan Pierce versus Pat Sabatini. Wrestler versus wrestler. Uh, we have heard uh, uh, arguments on both sides. This is like a really terrible way to be contrarian because pretty much everything's been covered here. Sabatini by decision, Pierce by decision. The only thing that people really haven't tried here are one of these two guys by knockout. So let's just see if there's a line on that. Just winning method like anybody by KO here. Can you do that? I mean, what you'd have to do is probably bet both of them by knockout. So we, we can do that, actually. It's the way to synthetically get the same thing. So we're going to play. Wait, we got to get to the right fight here. So Pierce by KO is plus only 300. Sabatini by KO plus 1400. I mean. See, I don't understand this at all. Why can't Pierce win by submission here at 800? You know what? I'm, I'm not allowed to pass because those are the rules, but you know what we're going to do? This is a pass. There's really no way to be contrarian here. So I'm just going to give you kind of like my my – my opinion here, I, I I'll I'll just play Sabatini with the better jujitsu, just better jujitsu by sub plus the plus five hundred. I don't think it's particularly contrarian, but I just happen to think that this is what's going to happen again. So this is the one fight that I really don't have any way to be contrarian. This is just my actual opinion. I just think plus five hundred is probably too much. All right, moving on. C.J. Vergara versus uh, Roma Zanabov Tamirov. Even though, see, this is the one chance we have to. Play the fighter that's got that dog in him. Most most of the time, a fighter comes up where everybody says, well, he's got that dog in him. They all play him. 
But you know, we're hearing all week long that although CJ Vergara has got that dog in him, Tamir was just going to be too good. I mean, says who? Who who has he beaten Tamura that anybody has heard of that makes him a big favorite here? I don't know. We're, we're going to take a shot here. We're going to play Vergara plus the 270 for 180. We finally get a chance to play the guy with that dog in him. Daniel Rodriguez versus Alex Morono. This one is, is a piece of cake. Alex Morono looked just terrible in his last fight. Career worst. So we're going to take him here. Alex Morono plus the 180 for 180. Oh, how can that lose? Grant Dawson versus Rafa Garcia. I mean, everybody knows what's going to happen here. Dawson is going to get takedowns. He's going to hold him down and he's going to win a boring decision. So what you can't do is play. I mean, Dawson by decision is just atrocious. What you might be able to get away with to be contrarian is play Dawson in, let's say, the first round, because no one's expecting that. Or if you really want to be nasty, you'll play Garcia, because no one has tried that. Um, so let's take a look. Dawson is only minus 360, and yet no one has played Garcia. Ouch. How about round props? Dawson round one. All right, we got to try this. Dawson round one plus 550. We, ju we just have to try this. Chidi Njikwani versus Jared Gooden. Um, I, I was very surprised when the analysis of this fight started in the Twitter sphere because when I looked at this, I just thought it was going to be just an awful, boring fight. And, and I'm hearing that these are going to be a, it's a real exciting matchup and and all the J Njikwani's fights deliver. I, I just kind of don't see it that way. Um, so I'm going to go against the public again and just bet this fight to be boring. So that means either the over or the fight goes decision, something like that. I don't know which one of these guys is more likely to win by decision, but that's what we're going to try here. So let's see. So we could play over, over one and a half is one. How about over two and a half? Over two and a half, you get plus 115. That's all you get? How about fight goes decision? Plus 150. All right, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll go all the way to decision. If it goes two and a half, it'll, it, it won't, you know, we won't get beat out of this last two and a half minutes, I don't think. Um, all right, Brad Tavares versus Jun Young Park. Um, Brad Tavares has really, really good takedown defense. And uh, as a result, this fight is probably going to play out on the feet and it's probably going to be kind of a, it's the really, really boring striking battle. So you can't really bet anything <laughs> that has that narrative because everybody kind of agrees on that. Um, so what you can do is bet against the narrative of the Brad Tavares uh, good takedown defense and just play Park inside the distance, which is, I think, what we're going to do. So round pro uh, winning method, Park inside, that means by TKO or submission, plus 240 against the great takedown defense, plus 180. Okay, are we at the end here? Yeah, we, we, we let's, let's, let's review, as they like to send Family Feud, let's review for everybody the atrocious bets that our, Eric's partner just made for him. Luca Rosas by decision, how is he doing that? I mean, he only is gonna, if he, only, if he wins at all, it's gonna be by KO. Corey McKenna, she's too small, She's not going to be able to get Julia Piazza down, and nobody finishes women's fights. But that's just happened one out of 12 times. How about that? Um, or get a by sub. Uh, I just honestly don't get this line. I guess this isn't being particularly contrarian. I guess I have two I have two bets that kind of fit this mold. This one and the Sabatini by sub. I really legitimately think that's what's going to happen in those two fights. Sean Seraf, no one's playing him, so we're going to try it plus 245. Nico Price, even less than no one's playing him, so we're going to play him at 260. We get to play the guy that's got that dog in him against this Russian guy who's nobody's name, nobody can pronounce, but everybody just presumes is the greatest fighter. Uh, Alex Morono off the career worst performance, just the way we like it. Dawson, boring fight, so if that happens, we'll lose because we have him in round one. 
the the Njaquani fights always deliver. Hopefully not this time. John Young Park in a boring striking match. I don't know how he's going to do this, but uh, win by TKO or sub. So we're going to lose all 11 of those. So what are we going to do in, in the main event? Well, unfortunately, we have a situation. Well, first of all, you need to get, we need to reverse engineer the wager here. We can't just start by like saying what's up because we have to start with a 12 to one shot, um, which also fits the contrarian mold. Now, here's the problem. The problem is that, I mean, I've been doing this a while and um, Brett and what's his name? Brandon Roy Val is one of the most popular underdogs I've seen uh, since covering MMA. Uh, just, I would say at least 70% of the public and of the, of the, of the sharps and of the people who, who know MMA think this line's too wide. So really, unfortunately, everything involving Roy Val just has to be a bad bet. Um, Chiaro, uh, Tyro, he definitely wants to get this to the mat. So I think people are probably playing Tyro by sub. So if we want to get contrarian, what we have to do, and I'm totally down with it, is to play Tyra by uh, KO. And even Tyra by KO is probably not going to get me 12 to 1. So we're probably going to have to pick an actual round. So with that said, let's... Uh, wow. Michael Pereira versus Anthony Hernandez. What's the line on that fight before we even get there? Oh, dude. Hernandez is going to kill him. Is this a joke? Maybe I should include him in a parlay or something like that. When is this? This is next week. Jeez. All right. Well, we'll get we'll get to that. Um, all right. So let's go to Roy Val versus uh, Tyra. Let's see what he is by KO. It's probably not going to be enough. Yeah, KO plus six fifty. So we have to we have to find a round here. Um, we're just going to have to pick one. Let's see. Uh, round props. We want a specific method as well. So fight lines, winning method. Okay, so we want exact the fight parlays, fight props. No. Round props? Roy Val. I want I want Tyra in a in by KO. There it is. Okay. So any of these work. I mean, we could just go for Tyra by KO in round one. That would be something that no one would be expecting. Or how about Tyra by KO in round two? So Roy Val fights off the takedowns or whatever, gets through round one, but then round two, Tyra gets the takedowns, and, and maybe in the scramble, Tyra gets mount, and he gets a KO? That's certainly possible. I could play both of these. No, because then if one of them wins, that, that doesn't that violates it. Which of these rounds, I mean, this this would be Tyro by KO. What is Tyro, just for the hell of it, what is Tyro by sub in round one? Just, just for the hell of it. Just plus 550, I figure. All right, we're going to try it. Tyro by TKO, round one, plus 1600, quick and painless. Let's go. All right, we're going to put these in as soon as we log off. Um, we can't do it while we're on because uh, DraftKings is going to yell at us um, for being on Zoom at the same time. So until uh, next week, hope you guys don't tr tail all these because you're probably going to go 0-12. But hopefully you learned at least a little bit about how to analyze these fights in a little bit of a different way. Uh, take it easy and have a good have a good weekend.